Welcome to another newscast. My name is Sam Healy and in this video we're going to tell you all of the latest news about our projects as well as the company. As always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. Well, Gen Con 2021 was a blast. We had an amazing crew. Lincoln, Devin, Scooter, Brian, Al, my wife Jessie, and Marco all rocked the socks off the booth. We were able to sell nearly six pallets of product, including Solomon Kane, Reich Busters, Project Vril, Enchanters, and some various accessories from all of the above and Super Fantasy Brawl accessories. We ran demos on Darkest Dungeon, Steam Watchers, Enchanters, Super Fantasy Brawl, Six Siege, and Monster Apocalypse. We even threw in a Solomon Kane demo or two as well. We ducked and weaved each day with new ideas we were discussing and trends we were noticing for our booth and made slight changes. One of the Gen Con employees said that our booth was one of the fullest for demo games in the entire convention. Besides the regular lulls during lunchtime, attendees were always in our booth, at our tables, learning our games. All in all, I think it was a great show for Mythic Games and we hope to continue this trajectory from here into the next year. Now, we have updates for Time of Legends, Joan of Arc, Steam Watchers, Darkest Dungeon, the board game, and Enchanters Darklands. So let's get to it. For Joan of Arc today, just a quick update to state that the first two out of six Joan of Arc 1.5 containers headed for North America now have an ETA of October 8th. But this is only an estimate and it is subject to change. Please note that fulfillment will not begin in North America until all six containers have arrived. The most up-to-date estimate we have for containers heading to VR distribution for our Australia and New Zealand backers is October 24th. But again, this is only an estimate and could change in the future. We can probably expect a bit of a longer procedure in shipments than normal, but rest assured that boats are moving and product is on the way. For Steam Watchers today, just a quick note to say that the 40-foot container that has been sitting in harbor in LA is finally in port and will be unloaded on the 23rd. So the wait here in North America is nearly over. Unfortunately, we don't have any further updates for the UK shipments, but we are keeping an eye on the airwaves concerning them, and we will let you know when we have more information. For Darkest Dungeon today, we have a new development update. Things have been moving fast in the past month as the team is working on the different elements of the core box and Crimson Court expansion. As you can understand, the process of creating the final assets has several steps. Our graphic designers take the stats from the Excel sheets that the game designers have created and add them to the cards. Then, the game designers check these cards and comment on any changes that need to be made. After those changes are implemented, a final check is done by the game designers and then the elements are considered final. Up until now, we've finalized the following. Now this is a long list, so buckle up. All the dice, all the tiles, skills board, quest map boards, hero stat cards, large monster and boss combat cards, boss ability cards, quest cards, medium monster and boss combat cards, hamlet cards, rune cards, neutral curios cards, trinkets, diseases, positive and negative quirks, afflictions, virtues, initiative cards, and the hero skills. <sighs> this leaves very little to be tackled from the core box. What hasn't been laid out is mainly the boards, player aids, and the save sheet, with the rule book remaining as the greatest challenge. As the team works on the rule book, however, we will be able to share bits and pieces with you so that you see its progression. From the Crimson Court expansion, we've made a lot of progress as we have finished the following, the large monster and boss combat cards, the quest cards, curios, and the medium monster and boss combat cards. So we can safely say we are halfway through with this expansion. 
At this rate, we expect that we'll be able to resume playtesting early October. However, that will probably not include the finalized rulebook, which will have to enter the process a second time as soon as it's ready. This will also be the final playtesting of the game. We are confident about the gameplay and the mechanics, and we're certain that the game flows nicely. So what we're looking for at this particular time is if anything makes sense with the final layout, any typos, omissions, and small things that could have slipped through the cracks. Production-wise, we have some great news. The factory has been well at work these past few weeks. The molds have been produced. The resin masters have been sent to our production manager who carefully inspected them and approved everything. This means that the molds do not need any re-sculpting. Currently, we're waiting for the plastic miniature samples, which we expect to have in about a month's time. And at that point, we'll be able to start sharing several pictures with you as well. So hold on to your hats, folks. Here it comes. Last week, we launched in our eShop the new expansion for Enchanters Darklands. Your support has been massive so far, surpassing all of our expectations. So we certainly want to express our thanks for that. If you haven't had the chance to check it out, Enchanters Darklands introduces no less than six new kingdom decks themed around ancient horror stories and folklore. The decks introduce new mechanisms that open new strategies in the game. So let's get you introduced to who you can add to your ranks. First, the Ghost's Kingdom combined burying with various actions against monsters, like Swap thus allowing players to create a different type of trophy engine not based on brute force. Monsters from this kingdom ignore attack and defense bonuses granted by your items stack, but double those produced by your enchantment cards, and if the spirits approve, sometimes even more than double, which is totally spooktastic. Second, the Wood Folk introduced new conditional items and enchantments that could prove to be very powerful. The effectiveness of your cards is affected by your opponent's choices, so you'll always have to keep their stats and strategy in check. Third, the Trolls introduce a new mechanism called Whenever You Pass. This new effect will make you think twice before journeying farther from a card with this ability. Each time you journey, you'll face dilemmas about paying the crystal cost for a card or not. Items and enchantments can tempt you with their bonuses, and monsters can be very dangerous. Fourth, the noble vampires provide lethal and dangerous gifts. Cards focus on enchanters, wounds, and dealing damage to all of your opponents. If players can't curtail their wounds, Bloodthirsty monsters may become unstoppable as they boost their stats and effectiveness based on the opponent's wounds. Fifth, the Werewolf's Kingdom's cards are focused on which side of the moon token is face up, the new moon or the full moon. Items and enchantments gain a bonus or actions when the moon token is flipped, while monsters draw power from the full moon to boost their attack and defense stats. Sixth, and finally, with the Witch's Kingdom deck, you'll find cards that provide healing, crystals, and deck fishing. They can also turn opponents' monsters into frogs, as you would expect from any witch, thus making other players lose glory points. Monsters can be tricky too, so players will need to be extra careful when journeying against them. Otherwise, they might end up with a trophy pile full of frogs. Darklands will remain available for pre-order on our website until December 2021. And we've also added the limited overstock that we have from the previous Kickstarter campaign, along with the Kickstarter exclusive content that was offered, the Mythic deck, the Wounds deck, and the Events deck, so make sure you grab one of those too if you want. Now remember, Leo will be live tomorrow at 6 p.m. GMT, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on our YouTube channel with a live Q&A in English and at 8.30 p.m. Paris Time with a live Q&A in French. So tune in if you have any questions or if you just want to see what he might spoil. But even if he doesn't spoil anything, he's always a cool cat to hang around. So go check it out. 
So that's it for this week. Stay safe, play some games while you're at it, and we'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care.